first day I'd like you to know that prayers are not answered on earth they are answered in heaven they are of course offered on earth but the answers to these prayers come from heaven and it will interest you to note that the prayer we offer on the earth does not get to heaven as words. They get to heaven as incense. And that's very important. They get to heaven as what? Incense. And so it's expedient that the incense that you provide in terms of prayer become very pungent, so that it can be presented to God as a sweet smelling fragrance so that God can approve of it. Let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Revelation, chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. It says, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four preachers and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lord, the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense and it says which are the prayers of the saints verse 9 says and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation verse 10 says and have made us kings that's a kingdom of priests of kings and priests it says and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth praise God the epicenter of this event that is captured for us took place in a place called the throne room of God Where the very throne of God is. And he dwells there in the midst of the cherubims. As the cherubims spread their wings to shield that awesome brightness of his glory. And there also were the four living creatures who are unusual having four heads the 24 elders and also the lamp of god who was slain to receive glory honor power majesty and he was there on the floor having seven horns and seven eyes that is the seven spirit of god that is sent into all the earth and there was a question the question was who was worthy to take the scroll from the hand of god the father as he sat on the throne and there was no one found in heaven on earth and underneath the earth apart from the lamp of god who was slain for our redemption 
And so when he came and took the scroll from the hand of the Father, certain things were revealed. And among the things that were revealed was that our prayers are sent to God as incense. And they were gathered in golden bowls. And these prayers were carried by 28 entities. The four living creatures and the 24 elders. But not only were they carrying this incense in heaven, they were also holding on the other hand the instrument that is called harp. An instrument of praise, an instrument of worship. On one hand they had harps, on the other hand they had golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Now that tells us that only prayers that are offered by saints are sent to heaven. If there be sin, iniquity, the prayers when I said it's like the sacrifice that are offered under the Old Testament dispensation. When the sacrifice have been offered, the sacrificer stands by his sacrifice. And if the smoke that comes from that offering has sent straight to heaven, it is an indication that his prayers have been accepted by God. But if he does not ascend, if it scatters, it means that his prayers were not accepted. So in like manner, though we pray and give verbal sounds and pronouncement, they are turned into light and ascend to heaven as incense. And they have been gathered, been accumulated. And the day came when these prayers will be offered on a golden altar before God. The 28 entities had to do some work to make these prayers pungent so that God can honor them. And part of what they did was to offer worship. To offer worship. They, they took their harps and they began to sing. They began to sing about the redemption that the Lamb has accomplished on the earth. Redeeming us from every tribe, every tongue of the nations of the earth. They began to praise the Lamb for his redemptive effort. Now all of this was to create an enabling atmosphere upon which the prayers of the saint will be offered. That tells us that worship has a role to play if we truly desire to receive answers to prayers. One of the roles that worship pray, plays is that it is the get pass into the throne of God. If your prayers will gain ascendancy to the throne of God, what will open the door will be prayers of thanksgiving. That's why he says, our Father who art in heaven. And then, having identified the God to whom the prayers is about to be offered, the next thing that followed is, hallowed be thy name. In other words, we must begin with praise, with worship, with reverence. We must begin by acknowledging him. 
in Psalm 100 he says in verse 4 enter into his gate with thanksgiving into his court with praise be thankful to him and bless his holy name so when you engage in thanksgiving in praise you get to the sanctuary what will take you to the holies of holies is worship you need to reverence him you need to worship him and as you do that you will gain entrance because the gate pass is praise and worship and when that takes you to the throne room when you come before God then your prayers will be handed over to the 28 entities and when they have also added their own heavenly fragrance praise and worship do you understand that they are all working to make sure that what we have offered is pleasant to God and also answered God is interested in answering our prayers he's on our side and that's why he has positioned advocates for us in heaven and on earth do you know we have an advocate in heaven and at the same time we have an advocate on the earth who is standing before God on our behalf and pleading our case in heaven the advocate we have is Jesus he said you have an advocate in heaven that's who Jesus is pleading on our behalf is interceding on our behalf on earth we also have an advocate that is helps our infirmity and that is the person of the holy spirit and both advocates work together interceding for us and through us to make sure that all our needs are supplied our petition are answered our supplication are granted so we have enough on our side to ensure that our prayers are speedily answered but this morning understand that is expedient to commit to a lifestyle of incense of fragrance of worship and praise not just to come and pray many of us are burdened by our prayers to the point that we overlook that we need to minister to him who would answer the prayers when you look at the lives of individuals who had glorious encounters in the place of prayer you find out that there were people who also knew how to worship God imagine Paul and Silas in the darkest hour of the night locked up in the dungeon in the cold of the night probably they've not eaten all day certainly they were without clothing having been beaten with rods they were bleeding all over They had wounds and as though that was not enough naked in the cold in the dark hungry they were still fasting to the stock they were in chains then shot in the prison in that state these servants of God engaged in producing incense in heaven and the Bible says they offered prayers 
and sang hymns of praise to God. That combination made their incense very pungent. The fragrance arose straight to heaven. And it was a prayer that was coming from saints. And so God responded immediately. And you know what happened when he responded. Oh, light came into that darkness. The earth shook. The foundation of the prison went out of place. The prison gates flung open. The chains of every man was broken. And all of them became free. Why? They engaged in a sacrificial production of incense in heaven by combining their praise with prayers. Incense in heaven. Look at the life of the children of Judah and Josaphat when the enemy came against them. They fasted, they sought God, they prayed, and then God gave a word of assurance that he was going to fight for them. That the battle is of the Lord, not theirs. They should hold their peace. He will fight for them. But you realize that even though God has given a prophetic word, that in the physical, nothing seemingly happened until they engaged the second wing of this incense, which is called worship. Scripture says, as soon as they began to worship, God set an ambushment in the camp of their enemies. And the armies of three nations fought against one another until not one was left alive. Praise is a potent instrument for commanding victory. Is a weapon of spiritual warfare if you will learn to engage in the heart of praise of worship of thanksgiving when you make that your lifestyle every time you engage prayers you will produce incense in heaven and there will be automatic results men who are committed to praising god irrespective of whatever challenge confronts them will not lack answers to prayers of such men was job who lost everything in one day the richest man of the east all of a sudden within hours became a pauper lost everything but there was something he didn't lose he didn't lose the act of producing incense in heaven even though he had lost everything he didn't cease from the place of praise and worship the bible says he came and prostrated before god and worshiped god and said the lord give it and the lord has taken Blessed be the name of the Lord. He didn't know that it was not God that took from him. He didn't know. But can you see the heart of this man? He even felt that God has taken from him. It doesn't matter God has taken from me. Even at the manner it was taken from him. That the children were destroyed in one day. That is resources vast resources were consumed in one day the sheep fire came from heaven and consumed them 
Satan so plotted the destruction of Job that everything that happened was traceable to God. You see, where did the fire come from? Is it that one of the shepherds mistakenly started the fire and the, the sheep ran into it? He said, no. The fire came from, from heaven. Heaven, that's God now. Who else can send fire from heaven? Because they had limited revelation in those days. They didn't know that there were principalities in the heavenlies. They didn't know there were a host of wicked spirits in the heavenlies that can bring rain and fire down. They can play with the, <laughs> the, the, the stars, the sun, the moons and things in the heaven. These constellations. They didn't know that. So they said that, that is the finger of the judgment of God. Job is guilty of sin. And Job himself thought so that it is God that is punishing him. But he couldn't lay his finger on the sin that God was punishing him for. Because the Bible says that God himself testified that he was a saint. He was blameless. A man who feared God. And eschewed evil. But you see, he may have lost everything. But he didn't lose the culture of generating incense in heaven. And that's what scripture admonishes us to do. In Hebrews 13, 15, it says, By him, therefore, let us offer continually to God. Not when you feel like. Not when there is a big contract. Not when there is a new job. Not when you get some good money. Not when the life partner shows up. Not when... You know, there is enough to eat and drink. Paul and Silas had not eaten. There was nothing to drink. Perhaps he had been fasting for days. Let us offer continually. Continually. Oh, I wish that God will help us. To become vessels that generate sweet smelling incense in heaven. That our lifestyle will become a lifestyle of continual praise and worship. You will not need to ask God for much. Before you ask, He will hear you. That you go out every day praising, thanking, worshipping, celebrating God. Even when you are eating, you are saying, thank you, Jesus, in your heart. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. What did you think the early church prayed about? What were their prayer points? You think they were praying for provision? Huh? Or you think they were praying for miracles? Or that needs be met? Go check the content of their prayers. Rarely did they pray for provision or needs. Rarely. In Acts chapter 2 verse 47, we see a snapshot of what their daily routine was like. And he says, praising God and having favor with all the people. He says, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as we have been what? Being saved. So they lead, they led a lifestyle of praise. Praising God. And as they praised God, they generated favor. Everywhere they went, they found favor. Everywhere they went, they received approval. Jobs opened up. Things were opening up because they were committed to praise. Friends, in closing, I want to encourage us to continue this 21 days fast 
not by ceasing from the presence of God and just say, well, I thank God I've been there for 21 days, so blessed be God. No, but by continuing in God's presence in the place of praise and worship. You may pray, there's nothing wrong with that. But continue by praising God. You may eat, there's nothing wrong with that. But continue by what? By praising God. By worshipping God. There are lessons I've learned of recent that God is not hard of hearing. That before we even ask, He knows what we need. So you don't need to pray one prayer point for one year before God will answer. Do we understand that? You know, there were, there were times I thought that it was how long you pray. And I stayed there for hours, stayed there for days, and there was no answer. And God had to call me. <laughs> you know, when I get to the place where I pray and there's no answer, there's a lesson I need to learn. There's a new thing I've not been seeing that... I need to not see. There was one time when I prayed like that for days and there was no answer. It was in that season God taught me about His mercies. His mercies. And recently I had the experience again. And the Lord began to introduce me to the dimension of faith confession. That is not enough for us to believe. Do you understand that? You can pray and believe. But if you don't confess what you believe, there will be no result. Do you understand that? There will be no what? Result. So part of that confession of what we believe that we have received is praise. The highest expression of faith is praise. Do you understand that? When you look at people who receive from God, you discover that the moment they pray, they believe they receive, they, they get into demonstration of faith by praising God. And as they stay in that place to continue to praise God, that which they have believed they receive will be made manifest. An example is Abraham. At the age of 99, do you realize that that was when he truly believed? Romans chapter 4 captures that for us. He says, who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was written, so shall your descendants, what your seed be. The Bible says, though he had occasion to doubt, Considering his body being a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he says he did not doubt. He was not weak in faith. Now, if he was not weak in faith, what did he do? His Bible says he became strong in faith. How did he become strong in faith? He says, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. That that which he had promised, he was also able to perform. And let me let you know that for nine months, Abraham kept praising God. He first praised God for three months, and then Sarah conceived. And then he continued to praise God for nine months, and then Isaac was born. Because that was the only thing the Bible says he did. The Bible didn't tell us that he kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Do you understand that? He says he kept what? Giving glory to God. He kept praising God. He kept praising God. Learn another dimension of prayer. That you don't have to pray for 10 years before God meets a need. When you pray and you get to the point you believe God has heard you, get into the demonstration of your faith. And the way to begin to demonstrate your faith is to praise God like Abraham. Start praising God every day for that thing. Start declaring that you have received. And what God has given you will be made manifest. 
Praise God. One of these days I will teach on that. But I learned that the hard way. Do you understand that? I learned that the hard way. And let me say this to you. When you believe that you've received, and you come back again to be praying concerning that matter, it is a proof that you didn't believe you've received. Did you get it? It's a proof that you didn't believe you've what? Received. Because if you believe you've received, then you don't need to come back to ask God for it again. Now you begin to praise God until you see it. But when you come back to ask for the same thing again, it means that you don't believe you've received. So the lifestyle of the believers were majorly praise and worship. They, they stay there and praise God. And if you look through scripture, you see the epistles of Apostle apart from the book of Hebrews 13 that I've just read. If you read the book of Ephesians 5 verse 20. It says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture even admonishes us that we should not be drunk with wine wherein is dissipation, but we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing and making melodies in our hearts unto the Lord. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns. You see, the Bible encourages us to continue to praise, to worship, to praise, to worship. That is how you produce incense in heaven. I don't have the time to look at Revelation chapter 8 to show you from verse 2 to 3. That when the incense was also handed over to the angel, he also had dead incense to it. That's the prayers were handed over to him. He also had that incense to him before you offered it on the altar. I would encourage you to praise more than you pray. Praise more than you what? You pray. Because honestly, God is not wicked. And you don't have to pray. Okay, maybe you need one millionaire or you need a contract. or you Do you need to spend one month praying for that need before God will grant it? Do your children spend one month to ask you for, for biscuit or things before you grant it? Or your family members? Do they, do they ask you for one thing again, 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 again before you grant it? Do they? Your friends, do they ask you again and again? So if you being a human being, don't need to be asked again and again. <laughs> Do you understand that? So how come God would need to be asked again and again? Now that's different from warfare. When it comes to warfare, you fight until you win. Until you enforce the victory that Jesus has accomplished for us. And that may take a long time. Do you understand that? But what I'm talking about is asking and receiving from God. Do you understand that? Asking and meeting of needs. And I must let you know that there is nothing you need that Jesus has not paid for. Healing, deliverance, salvation, Holy Ghost, baptism, provision, everything we need has already been what? Be paid for. You just only need to receive them. Let me stop here because of time. Because we need to praise him. But please generate incense in heaven by committing not only to prayers but also to praise and worship praise and worship will give impetus to your prayers it will give acceleration to your prayers it will make your prayers more potent in the sight of God. Praise and worship would create a enabling atmosphere for your prayers to ascend to heaven. Praise and worship will attract the presence of God to you that before you call, he will answer. And while you are yet speaking, he will listen. Praise God. Jesus led a lifestyle of praise and worship. 
There was nothing to set before the multitude. All they had was five loaves and two little fishes. What did he do? He lifted it up to God and gave thanks. Lazarus has been dead and buried. For four days, Jesus came there and did what? And gave thanks. The disciples returned from the feed victoriously. Jesus lifted up his face and gave thanks. Father, I thank you. That their eyes are seeing the things they are seeing. He said, many prophets desire to see it, but couldn't see it. He was unveiling mysteries to them. He gave thanks. He said, Father, I thank you that you've hidden these things from the wise. And you've revealed it to babes. How was Jesus spending all night in prayers to God? You think he was just there saying, Oh Lord, oh, preserve my life. Protect me. Preserve my life. Provide for me. Oh Lord, walk miracle. No. When he gets there, he will fellowship with the Father. He will praise him. Hope you know Adam prayed also. But the prayer Adam prayed was a prayer of fellowship. Adam had need of nothing. There was nothing that he needed that God did not provide for in the garden. There was nothing. All he needed and what he didn't need was available. There was gold. All manner of fruits. Adam didn't need to use gold, diamonds, and all those minerals. He had four rivers. Four river heads. Praise God. So friends, come to the place of fellowship that is powered by praise, worship, adoration. You are just loving God. And then angels will surround you. And when you pray, God will answer speedily and you will generate acceptable incense in heaven amen. amen let's be on our feet oh god is good he's not a wicked god he loves you he cares about your needs he knows what you need before you even ask do you understand that so it's time to generate incense in heaven it's time to praise and worship him. It's time to praise more than you pray. It's time to thank him, to love him, to be interested in ministering to him than your needs. And when you get to that place where you minister more to God than asking God to give to you, the things you didn't ask God for will come to you. Lift up those hands and thank him. Praise Him.